So these are the um, names for the all-pervading, all-prevailing mercy, the unlimited mercy, and the unlimited outer expression. The next divine name I wanted to speak about is Arauf. Arauf is the kind, the compassionate, and the friendly. So Arauf is similar in uh, nature to Arahim. It means to fill it fills one's heart with gentleness, tolerance, compassion, and kindness. And to fill one's heart with these qualities means to have found one's dignity as a human being. So the root, um, R, I, N, F, means kindness and compassion, softening of the heart. So this quality softens our heart and eliminates in us every response to malice. So it enables us not to respond to malice that we encounter. And if you repeat this name 287 times, your heart will fill with compassion for others. The next quality I wanted to talk about is our bar, the source of all goodness. Albar is the one who relieves the burdens the kind again the source of all goodness You'll see kind come up many times in descriptions of these names of mercy because kindness is highly, highly valued. Um, it's one of the most beautiful qualities. Um, some have said that one of the most noticeable qualities of the Prophet of Ahi Salat Islam, something which everyone, everyone commented upon his honesty, but everyone also commented upon his kindness. He was very kind. So Albar is the benevolent one, the one who kindly and generously dispenses good. On the spiritual level, Albar grants faith, returns good deeds, and fosters taqwa in the heart. Taqwa is the Arabic word that means God consciousness or awareness. <clears throat> Albar is, is um, important also because it contains our connection to our parents. So the quality of bar helps us to close our hearts to any arrogance towards our parents and to open ourselves to mercy for our parents. And it carries also the kindness and good deeds that flow from you to your family. So our bar is important for oh, mercy for our family, and particularly our parents. Something yeah. we all need, I know. Or often. So, um, the root is B-R-R, -R, and from it comes goodliness, kindliness, and paradise. And then beer comes from this root, means heart, soul, and mind. And bura comes from this root too, and it means sweet through and through. <laughs> the next one I want to talk about, you won't probably won't be so familiar with. It's asatar. A sitar is not one of the 99 names that you see in the most commonly recited lists. 
a satar is the veila, or the coverer, the one who covers over faults. The one who covers up faults, who veils them. The one who covers faults and mistakes. So there's an example of this quality that Sidi wrote about in, um, in the reality of Gnosis on page 25. He was speaking about the Prophet Salam and his household. And um, what he was writing about was that whenever they encountered a deficiency in someone, they never focused on that which was shameful in the other, but remained in a station of deep courtesy, perfecting their own qualities until they arrived at perfection and the witnessing of the absolute perfection and everything outside of them. So what Sidi means here, at least one of the meanings, is that when they saw a fault in somebody or a wrong action, they simply did not notice it. They covered it up by simply not noticing it and continuing to focus on their own, improving their own being. So this is a satar. Then we have Al Wali, which I'm sure all of you know well, the protecting friend. The root W L Y contains, among other meanings, to be a friend or to be close to somebody. We're, we're all familiar with this word, aliyah, which is friends. See, he talks a lot about uh, the friends of Allah, the aliyah. These are people who are close friends of Allah, who reach that station of friendship. Um, this comes also from that same root, the root of the protecting friend, alwali. Those who carry alwali in their heart are people who open their ears to the worries of their fellow human beings, who keep their eyes open for their rights, who use their strength to support them and to help those around them to open up to life. So it carries an aspect of um, kindness and sympathy, but also an aspect of support and strength and protection. It's said that if you repeat this name 1,000 times on a Thursday night, in surrender and devotion, all material and spiritual barriers will dissipate. That's a good one. When there is a quarrel in a relationship, keep this name in your heart during the dispute and the quarrel will dissolve. Al-Wali. So when we're in the midst of the quarrel, keep Al-Wali in our heart. Um, another name of, of mercy is Arafur the oft forgiving, or the all forgiving. We always speak about this name on Tuesday, when, uh, Tuesday, Sunday, when we speak about uh, forgiveness. But just to know that great, that compassion also lies in this name, Arafur, the forgiving. Next one is al Halim. Al-Halim, the tolerant, the clement. Al-Halim is translated as the gentle or the tolerant or the clement. It carries the qualities of tolerance, patience, friendliness, kindness, and wisdom. Uh, Al-Halim, if you repeat Al-Halim, it can fill the heart with peace and quiet. Um, Sakina, S-A-K-I-N-A, -A, is the peace that arises from being aware of God's presence. Sakina is the, the root, it comes from the same root as the name Sakina. So Al-Halim can help fill the heart with this peace and quiet that arises from being aware of God's presence. Um, 
the last three that I wanted to mention are Al Wahhab. Al Wahhab is usually translated as the bestower. but also as the dispenser of mercies. So Allah bestows mercies upon us through this name. We have Alafu, but we'll also speak about Alafu on Sunday, the pardoner, when we talk about forgiveness. And the last one, Asabur. patient long-suffering. When, um, when we recite a sabur, a feeling of fear as well as a feeling, a feeling of fear as well as a feeling of mercy and compassion manifest in our heart. We stand clearly in front of our nafs, reproaching its misconduct and weaknesses, while enfolding it in the knowledge of God's endless mercy and compassion, which forgives everything. So this is a good one when we're facing our nafs. We're able to stand clearly in front of our nafs, reproaching the misconduct and weaknesses. That's station two, right? The reproachful nafs while enfolding it in the knowledge of God's endless mercy and compassion, which forgives everything. Any questions or comments about any of these? So I thought we might um, have an exercise um, that I thought we might do together and might be useful for you at home if you'd like to use it. And it is the following. 